Hi guys, my name is Ian Crew. I'm an instructor at the Joy of Dance Center in Toronto, Ontario, and the creator of socialballroom.dance, where you can learn your dance at your place on your schedule. Last week we interviewed Noelle Miller, a fitness expert who offered us some useful insights on how we can use uh, the idea of body awareness, you know, being in touch of what's happening inside of ourselves to dance for life and to prevent ourselves from, from getting injured along the way. I'd like to get deeper into how we can train ourselves to become more aware of what's happening inside our bodies, but first I want to address uh, a bit of an issue that some people will find a little controversial. I know that uh, many ballroom dancers see correct ballroom dancing as adhering to a very specific, precise standard of movement and posture and so on. And uh, if you are in, if it hurts your body to do that, then so be it. That's the cost of correct technique. I personally tend to lean more towards a more flexible approach. Um, the way I see it is that we all have different, like everybody's body is a little bit different from everybody else's. And we need to take that into account when we're learning to dance. So, for instance, if you have more tight hips, for example, you may not do as much Latin hip action as somebody else might. Or uh, if your back is stiffer, you may not have as open a chest when you're going into that Viennese waltz uh, or another smoother standard dance. And I personally feel that that's, that's generally okay if you like if this is a uh, body imbalance or if there's like an injury or something that needs to be addressed through stretching or through consulting a professional, that's one thing. But once you've ruled that out and you've d determined that this is a, a structural thing in your body, I, I, I always say that it's, it's better to try and just dance within what your body is comfortably able to do. Because if you do that, odds are that's what's gonna look the most natural uh, for you. There are a number of exercises that can help us get more in touch with uh, these sensations in our body so that we can um, take preventative measures to prevent uh, an injury uh, from happening. Uh, so these are generally called somatic exercises and there's a number of different kinds of, of exercises out there from Feldenkrais to the Alexander Technique to mind-body, uh, centering, and continuum, uh, all the spiritual sounding names aside, these are essentially different movements that you can use to build your uh, coordination, your balance, and to uh, reduce the muscle pain that you get throughout life, um, whether you're dancing or not. They're potentially very helpful. I'm no expert on them, which is why I encourage you to check them out but they all follow certain principles which we as ballroom dancers tend to adhere to. For example, uh, you don't want to force any of the movement. You want it to flow naturally. You don't want to use a lot of unnecessary muscles in the movement. So it's better if um, you, uh, you turn off, if you like, the muscles that uh, you might be tensing more as a result of like overthinking it or you know as soon as you can you want to try and relax and just do it with a sort of minimal amount of energy possible and it's also good to um, uh, get a little bit more comfortable with um, making sure that your joints and your bones are what supports you so we don't want to have shakiness in the muscles, which can be a sign that we're, we're not quite balanced or we're moving in a way that's causing our muscles to overextend themselves. But maybe you feel like you just don't have the time or energy to, to research these different methods and, and figure out what works for you. Um, I don't blame you, a lot of us are very busy. Uh, one way that I use is uh, I simply can spend 10-15 uh, minutes a day meditating. Because um, meditation is a, an excellent way of uh, temporarily shutting out the world and getting more in touch with our bodies. And when we're there, 
it's a lot easier for us to um, to just kind of uh, sector by sector, if you like, um, become aware of uh, any discomfort or any sensations in our body that that just sort of stand out from the baseline. Because in our society, you know, we tend to have very short attention spans. We're we're very outward focused. We're thinking about you know work and kids and family and and how we're going to pay the bills and so on and we can very easily just ignore our bodies all the time so we don't even notice if the body is screaming at us that hey you know you're not using me in a way that's that's respectful and uh, if you keep doing this I I'm going to have to uh, I'm gonna break down in some way so to give you an idea of how easy it is to to do this and how quickly you can do it we're going to do sort of a fast version of a body scan now. So what I'd like you to do is find a place where, you know, there's relatively little distractions. Um, you know, if you're, if you're at work right now, just you can always save this part of the video until you get home. Uh, find a place where it's nice and comfortable for you to sit or lie down. And uh, you're just going to want to just make yourself as comfortable as you can and uh, just relax and maybe even close your eyes. And uh, the point of this uh, initially is to try and relax your body, but even more important to relax your mind because we get so easily pulled away uh, from our body with the struggles of daily life. And, and as a result, we get into this habit of just ignoring our body. So we're going to do the opposite. We're shutting out the outside world temporarily and we want to just focus on our breathing and listen to my voice and just take a few minutes or a few moments to uh, gradually let your mind slow down and just get prepared to, to start focusing inwards rather than outwards. And once you feel like you're in a good place for that, Take your attention and put it on your head and your neck and just spend maybe 30 seconds just sensing, you know, if there's anything that feels um, different from the rest of your body. It could be a tightness or a sensation of warmth, uh, an aching pain, a soreness. Uh, just make note of that. Just notice it. and. You can move your attention on down to the tops of your shoulders and the muscles around your shoulder joints. And then further onwards to your upper arms and your lower arms and your hands. Just taking a bit of time to be aware of the muscles and the joints, tendons that are connecting the muscles to the, to the bone. And uh, as you get more comfortable, this will get easier for you. And bring your attention over to your chest, thinking of the intercostal muscles, that's the little guys that are in between your ribs, and then the larger pectoral muscles across the chest. And as you're, you know, thinking of if there's anything that seems strange or uncomfortable, you may find that there's some sensations which you can't so easily describe. And if that happens, I encourage you to spend a little more time on those sensations and just see if you can find uh, a way of describing them that, that makes sense to you. Just throw some descriptors at the feeling and see what sticks. Uh, because if you can find a word that, that feels right, that feels like it's describing what you're feeling, it'll be easier to get back in touch with that feeling if it arises while you're dancing. So you can say, oh, when I do this kind of movement, it seems to be causing this feeling of stiffness or hardness or, or inflammation or, or whatever word you end up deciding. So moving on to your upper back and your lower back, feeling the little muscles that crisscross around the spine and then the larger muscles that stretch across the back and downwards to the pelvis, feeling the muscles that uh, come across the front and the back, which allow it to tilt forwards and backwards and the hip flexors, the bands of muscle that run down the sides of the hips and the, the glutes 
and the IT band that runs down the outside of the sides of our legs from our hips down to our knees. And from there, you might shift your attention over to your quadriceps, which are the big muscles at the front of your legs, above the knee, and then the hamstrings, which is on the backs of your legs. And then downwards to the knee joint, just being aware of any, any pain or discomfort where the tendons connect to the knee, because the knee is a common place where we can feel that there's there's a discomfort or it's an easy place to injure as a, as a ballroom dancer. And then continuing down to the calves and the ankles, feeling any crunchiness or soreness or tenderness. And moving on to the tops of the feet and the insteps, the arch that separates the heel of the foot from the balls. And then finally running out to the balls of the feet and the muscles that allow the toes to move around. And I, a little reminder that as you complete the scan, just to make a little mental note of what you are feeling and where, because these are all indicators of places where we need to pay more attention to. So we're going to come out of this now. Hopefully you haven't fallen asleep yet. So once we've developed this uh, familiarity, actually before we go on, I want to just say whether you're doing somatic exercises or um, meditation, um, it's a very good idea to um, practice this regularly on a daily basis is, is ideal because that allows you to build this familiarity, um, this connection between your mind and your body. And the stronger that gets, the more quickly you'll be able to sense if something is amiss inside so that you can kind of catch it right in the moment or right in the movement, as it were. So when you're practicing dance now, you might go into it by uh, dancing your movements very slowly and then maybe a little faster, maybe at half speed and then three quarter speed and then full speed. And each time you're checking in with how the feelings in your body are changing, moving around. And that gives you more information about whether there's something that you've done that's caused something unpleasant to be felt. And usually when that happens, it means one of two things. One is that your technique might need to be adjusted a little bit. So you can talk to your instructor about this. You can say, hey, you know, uh, what's, what's a way that I can do this differently because I'm noticing that this, this doesn't feel right when I do it this way and um, they'll suggest different things for you and hopefully they'll be understanding of, you know, if this is something that maybe is harder for you than it is for other people that, you know, there's, um, there's things you can do that are, are more uh, specific for your body. Uh, the other option is that it may have to do with uh, a muscle tightness or an imbalance in the body or an old injury that you had, something that's, um, that could cause uh, uh, more problems uh, later on, in which case uh, you want to either stretch that out or if the sensation returns or if it doesn't leave after stretching, uh, seriously consider consulting a professional because there's nothing worse than somebody who loves dancing suddenly being able to not dance at all for days, weeks, months, sometimes even years in some cases. Uh, it's it's really hard. So spend that extra time, spend that extra money if you need to. It is well worth it. Next week, um, we're going to get deeper into stretches and, you know, uh, higher impact versus lower impact stretches and uh, stretches that are, are safer for you, different kinds and, and what uh, experts today recommend. Um, because there's a lot of different kinds of stretches out there in the internet. And it's better to go in knowing some, some basics, at least, about uh, what kinds of stretches uh, are good for you and which ones you want to avoid because they run the risk of straining or, or causing things to tear. Um, so I hope you found uh, this article today helpful. And uh, if you have any comments or questions, you can, as always, message me on my Facebook fan page, Ballroom Dancers Anonymous 
or you can email me at ian at socialballroom.dance. Again, it's ian at socialballroom.dance. I hope you have yourself a lovely week, and until next time, happy dancing. <laughs>